Hi and welcome back to episode 3 of the NI Women's Football Show, the series dedicated to bring you all the latest news from across all areas of women's football in Northern Ireland. As ever, it's a busy show today, so let's have a quick look at what's coming up in this episode. Our studio guest is a young woman who's recently broken into the Northern Ireland team and looks set to have a very bright future ahead of her in the women's game. And that's Lindfi Ladies, Rebecca McKenna. We'll be catching up via Zoom with Belfast Celtic Ladies head coach Ryan Cadell, who amongst other things will be discussing his side's unexpected promotion into the NIWFA Championship. And finally, Lauren McCann will also be joining us with all the latest news from across the women's game in Northern Ireland. Plenty then to get through on today's show, so let's get things underway by welcoming our special studio guest, Linfi Ladies and Northern Ireland International, Rebecca McKenna. Rebecca, welcome to the Northern Ireland Women's Football Thanks Show. Thanks for having me. No problems at all. We're going to start off tonight by looking back at that memorable night for the Northern Ireland Ladies team. Back to Tuesday the 13th of April, we've beat, beat Ukraine, we've qualified for the first major tournament. I know I, as a, as a supporter, somebody was sitting at home on a sofa watching it, was jumping about the living room <laughs> like an absolute madman. What was it like to be there in the night? I think for the whole team, it was just a whirlwind of emotions. Like after the game, I don't think it really sunk in. Um, there were some players crying, but it was, you know, good tears. And I uh, think for us as a group, like everyone was just so happy because over the past two years, the amount of work that us as a group and not just us, but the whole staff had put in and for it to pay off, it was just amazing. There seemed to be a lot of confidence, you know, ahead of the game that you could actually get a result. I didn't necessarily share the confidence. I'm always a bit of a... Sort of an optimist or a pessimist, should I say? Was there a real belief in the camp that you could get a result that night? Yeah, well, I think for us as a squad, coming off obviously four wins in the qualifications, they like, that gave us so much confidence. But us as a squad, like we knew from the first game, getting that such a good result, going into the second, as a team, we knew we were saying to ourselves, we're not going to concede, we're not going to concede, because we believed that we could get through. And us having that confidence in ourselves, I think that helped us push on. The actual amount of euphoria regarding the actual thing, I mean, I, I personally couldn't believe it. I mean, a few years ago, your women's football was very, very seldom talked about. Now, it's gradually, it's built up over the course of time. But after that one game, everybody went completely mad, to be honest. It was on television, it was all over the radio, it was in the local press, it was in the national press. I even was reading on some reports on American sort of websites and stuff about it. It was absolutely unbelievable. We even had the likes of Stormont sort of talking about it, you know, we had the City Hall at Green. Could you believe all that stuff? No, but I think for us as a group, um, like we deserved all the credit that we got for the amount of work that we put in. And I think it's about time that more people are starting to broadcast the women's game. Because obviously over the past years, you'd never get anything like that. And I think us showing everyone how good we really are, everyone's believing it. Um, and then broadcasting it, it's only going to get better. Yeah, it's going to definitely build a game. I mean, I can see massive growth in the women's game coming over the next few years. So, Yeah, well, I think that's important because you haven't seen it for many years. Uh, the more growth in women's football will help push on because, you, you know, you get so many people that are not so into women's football and they don't back it. And okay. I think us showing the results that we got will help that. In terms of the actual squad on the night, I mean, we, with Demi Vance in the last in the last show, Demi obviously missed the game through injury, and there was, there was quite a few players missed that one through injury, and big key players, to be honest. Now, they're all due to return, and hopefully will be back available for selection, you know, come the actual European Championships when they come around next year. It's going to make the selection very, very difficult for Kenny in terms of that. It's very important for players like yourself to keep yourself in, the, in, the, in his eyes, so to speak. Yeah, well, I think, personally, that's only going to do the squad better because all them injured players coming back it's bringing more competition and that brings more enthusiasm to the squad because everyone's going to be fighting for a place now it's, you're not just going to get handed a place and um, I think with all them coming back um, people are going to work harder and um, even though everyone was working so hard up until that point but um, I think it's just going to do the whole squad the world of good and having the likes of Demi, Megan Bell, Cara all coming back, it's just adds more strength to the squad. Yeah, very much so. Obviously, we've got the World Cup come up as well, and those will be a big few big games, you know, in terms of not so much practice games, that's not, not the right thing to say, but they'll be important games in terms of development to, to really be in, in the right place, place of mind when the Euros comes around. 
we'll talk very very shortly about the World Cup draw but we are going to take a quick break now and we're going to go to Lauren McCann just with some local women's football news so here's Lauren McCann <laughs> We start with futsal, a Northern Ireland women's futsal team created their own piece of history on Thursday as they secured their first ever competitive victory in their second qualifying game for the European Women's Futsal Championships, which will take place next year. Olivia Brown scored the only goal of the game to give Northern Ireland the historic win over host nation Lithuania, as Keith Gibson's side bounced back from a disappointing 4-1 loss to Serbia in their opening game. Sticking with Northern Ireland and Kenny Sheed's senior women's side, have discovered their opponents for the upcoming 2023 World Cup qualifying campaign. Northern Ireland were placed in pot 3 after their heroics in qualifying for Euro 2022 saw them move up to 48th in the FIFA World Rankings, their highest ever position. They were drawn in Group D alongside England who defeated them 6-0 in the friendly in February. They'll also come up against Austria who are ranked 21st in the world, Latvia, Luxembourg and North Macedonia who will be playing their first competitive fixture since 2005. Group games commence in the second week of September this year and the finals will take place in Australia and New Zealand in the summer of 2023. Only the winners of each of the nine groups will qualify automatically for the tournament, with the three other spots awarded to the best performing runners-up after the playoff ties. Many of Northern Ireland's international stars have been involved in the opening two rounds of games in the new Danske Bank Women's Premiership season. Cliftonville are the early pace setters, having recorded 4-0 and 3-2 victories over Derry City and Linfield Ladies, with new signings and sisters Caitlin and Kirsty McGuinness already off the mark for the Reds. Champions Glen Thorne are hot in their heels as they also boast a 100% win and start the new season thanks to 1-0 and 3-0 victories over Crusader Strikers and Sion Swifts. Courtesy of goals from Northern Ireland internationals Danielle Maxwell and Carrie Beattie, with Beattie bagging a hat-trick on Wednesday night. Linfield beats Sion on the opening day before falling to defeat to the Reds, whilst Crusaders bounce back from their opening day loss to thrash Derry 4-1 at Seaview on Wednesday night. The Candy Stripes and Sion are yet to pick up a point so far, and face each other next week at the Brandywell. In other news, promotion and relegation have been reinstated to all six NIWFA leagues for the upcoming season, which is set to commence in the week beginning the 23rd of May. There have been a reshuffle of teams competing in each league, with sides such as Coleraine, Bally McCash and Belfast Celtic Ladies promoted to higher divisions based on their 2019 league standings, which was the last campaign to be completed before the pandemic. There are also eight new sides entered into the league for the first time this year. Finally, Electric Ireland have launched the Shooting for the Stars children competition, which invites children to write their own stories about girls football. Here's actor and playwright Tara Lynn O'Neill with more details. Are you a bloody writer with an interest in football? Are you aged between 7 and 11? Well, Shooting for the Stars is a brand new book competition with Electric Ireland in association with the Game Changers NI initiative supporting girls and women's football on all levels. All you have to do to kick off is sharpen your pencils, boot up your laptop and create your very own tale about girls football. The winning story will be illustrated and published and the book distributed to all the young girls who are signed up with the Electric Ireland Shooting Stars Initiative with the Irish FA. So, what have you got to lose? Pitch us your story on www.electricireland.com forward slash shooting stars and you could be a winner. So Rebecca, we'll have a quick look now at the, the draw for the World Cup, as I mentioned there, you know, before the news break. Um, we've obviously been drawn against, you know, England, Austria, North Macedonia, Latvia and Luxembourg. Your thoughts on that draw? Well, I think it's a hard group, you know, we obviously played England in a friendly and um, didn't go our way. But 
obviously haven't played them will be a lot more prepared to play them this time round. But yeah, looking forward to it. I think it's right in saying that in the England game you you actually picked up a booking towards the end. Is that right? Now, <laughs> yeah, I, you're far too young to remember this, but I can remember a long time ago, way back in the maybe the seventies, nineteen seventies, or whatever. It is, there's a guy called Peter Rafferty played for Linfield. And he got a cap for Northern Ireland. We came, he, they played England at Windsor Park, and England had a star sorted lineup as you would expect. Kevin Keegan was in the team that day, and Peter Rafferty came on as a sub. And he's only been on the pitch about five minutes, and Keegan got the ball, he went flying over, and literally took him out of the game, to be honest. And Keegan got up and went, What the? <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, Here's another Laura Linfield player <laughs> taking out an England player. Who was it you took out in your case? Uh, Chloe Kelly. Chloe Kelly, and that's yeah. one, for the, one for the studs to remember, is it? Yeah, I think I was the only player to get booked that game too, and it was... It was quite late on, wasn't it? Yeah, it was yeah. quite late on, yeah, but... Uh, you'll remember you next time around, to be honest, <laughs> let's be honest about it. OK, listen, we're going to take a quick break as well at this stage in time. What I want to do at this point in time, I want to see the reaction to the draw from Kenny and from, uh, obviously, Team Captain Mercer Callahan. So if you haven't seen this, this is how they reacted when the draw for the World Cup was made. This has to be us, I want it to be us. In Group D... Oh, yes! And it's coming out now that we're playing England again, and because we've played them recently, we're not afraid of them. But we will do everything we can to beat them. You know, we'll be playing them with confident players and a very, very confident environment. And everything we do when that match comes will be to prepare for that. I mean, they're the world beaters. They're number six in the world at the minute, and um, we know the the, the quality um, in the side, um, especially because we played them not long ago. Um, so it's an exciting draw. Um, I mean, you want to be playing against the best players in the world. That's why we play, and you know it'll, it'll stand it as a good, in good stead for um, our preparation uh, for the Euro finals next year. OK, we're back. So we've heard there from Kenny and Marissa in terms of the draw. We have talked about the draw already. So things are looking quite positive. In terms of the international setup, I think you're now, I'm not sure how many caps are on, but you're starting to get established in the international side of But now. Do you find it difficult to sort of shift between international and league football? Is that a, is that a difficult jump both ways, you know, jumping from international to league and from league to international? Well, for me personally, I think so, because obviously a club... Um, the standards getting a lot better over here. It's a lot more competitive. The league's not just one team winning it. Um, obviously, you can see this year, the likes of Clittenville, the amount of quality players they've mm -hmm. added and stuff like that. It's making it more competitive. But um, going to play internationally, it's just a completely different level. It's one of the highest places that you could be playing on on the stage, and uh, it's hard personally for me, I think, as well, because a club, I play a different position than the, the country, so. Sometimes it can be hard to adapt, but wherever I play, I always just try to give 100% and hopefully it pays off. You seem to play different positions, uh, you know, for, even for your country, to be honest, is that right? Yeah, uh, I think the only position I haven't played is goalkeeper at this point. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Well, that's good that Kenny trusts you, sort of in yeah. terms of wherever he can put you, he knows you'll do your job. Yeah, well, whether um, wherever my club manager plays me or Kenny plays me, you know, I'm always going to give 100% and um, it'll never change no matter where I'm playing on the pitch, so... I think your debut is against Kazakhstan, was that, was that yeah. the right So you've obviously played, you know, a number of different sort of countries, you know, at all sort of different levels. You said England, you don't get much better. What did you make overall of England as a team? I mean, are they really that that good a side? Well, uh, I think they're just they're so quick and they're so strong, so physical, and you know that's because obviously most of their players are playing at the top standards in the WSL one, and mm -hmm. um, I think. England as a team are just one of the probably one of the best teams at the moment. But um, us playing them again, I think we're a lot more better prepared this time, and uh, I think we can get a result against them. You said your finger get 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 a result. I mean that would be an enormous result for Northern Ireland if, if we could take anything off England, even a draw to be honest, you know. But I would say in Belfast, what's the stop us then? It should be a great match. Yeah, it will be, and I think as a squad, how much we've come on over the past couple of years, you know beating Ukraine and stuff like that. You know, anything can happen in football and we just have to work hard and hopefully it'll pay off. In terms of your own personal ambitions, obviously you're playing for Linfield at the moment. Do you have any ambitions, you know, to maybe look at maybe a full-time career in, in women's football? Yeah, well, hopefully. Um, I'd like, I'm looking, ho hopefully, to get across to England and 
Um, it's obviously you want to be playing the top level, and I think England's the place to be at the moment. The plan with what amount of players are recruiting at the minute from across the whole um, world, and um, yeah, it'd be great to get across. A lot of Northern Irish players have sort of came, went over the water now. Obviously, with a few in Scotland, with a few in England, and so forth. So the opportunities are starting to open up. All of a sudden, clubs are starting to look at Northern Irish players. Yeah, I think, you know, over the years, the past couple of years, you know, they never looked at yeah. nowhere near our league and now they're actually starting to look at our league. You know, the likes of Chloe McCarran that's went over, Megan Bell, Demi Fancif went to Scotland, you know, and they're starting to look at our league because you can see how much it's improved over the years, how much more competitive it's got and I think that shows it's, it's a good thing for us, you know. Yeah. Well, hopefully things work out for you and you obviously do get that move in, in due course over things. So the more players we have over there, the better it is for, for everybody, for not for them as individuals, but also for the, the country as well, from that sort of viewpoint. Yeah. OK, let's give Rebecca another break, as it's time now to hear from Belfast Celtic Ladies head coach Ryan Cadell. It's been a busy few weeks for the West Belfast side, what with the news of a link-up with Scottish sides in Murren, a sponsorship deal with the major television series, and the, this week the announcement that the club will play its football next season in the NIWFA Championship. Earlier on this week, I caught up with Ryan on a Zoom call, and here's what he had to say. So we're joined next on the Northern Ireland Women's Football Show by the head coach of Belfast Celtic Ladies. It's Ryan Cadell. Ryan, welcome to the show. Thanks very much, Colin. Thanks for having me on. We well, brought you on this evening because obviously the big news over the last few days has probably been that the uh, leagues have been announced for the NIWFA this season. And Belfast Celtic have obviously benefited massively from that. And you now find yourself in the Championship as opposed to the First Division uh, as a result of learning that he's having to withdraw. So, what's your thoughts on that, you? Yeah, it's, it's, it's great great for us. You know, it's a um, great opportunity for the girls. There's a lot of girls here that have been with us from North 2 when uh, we entered the leagues and they've worked the whole way through with us to come in like 14, 15 year olds, some older, and, and stuck with us the whole way and work their way up through the division. So, it's great for them. Um, you know, personally, I, I would love to go up as Division 1 champion. That's just me being yeah. uh, you know, my mind head on. But um, yeah, it's a great opportunity and, and the girls are really excited. Um, big, big, big step up in terms of skill levels, obviously, go up to the championship. I mean, there's no easy games at that level. Yeah, that, that's a good thing as well. You know, every, every game's a challenge. We've played against a lot of the teams. Um, obviously, Middle Eastern St. James's were in our division a couple of years back. And we've played against another two or three of them in the Super Cup, so we know what we're going sort of into, and it's good. It's going to be a good challenge for us, and um, it's a benefit the girls, I think. And this year is the added incentive of that promotion to the Anska back Premiership is also back on the card as well. So that's an extra sort of incentive for all the team. Yeah, it's it's exciting times. It's good to see that that uh letting the clubs up from the NIWFA and giving them the opportunity. So I think that's going to be on you know, all the clubs' minds of trying to get in them top two places and and pushing on. Very much so. It's been a positive few months, obviously, for Belfast Celtic. You've also had a, a link announced up with St Mern uh, Girls Football Club. How did that one come about? Um, we went over and played them in a friendly a couple of years back in 2019. Um, and from then, me and their head coach have sort of stayed in contact. We would sort of regularly set up Zoom calls and stuff, just sort of talking each other through what, what their club's plans are and what they're, what they're doing. And um, they're starting to become more performance-based, so they're trying to push their way up through the Sky's division, think they're in the championship now, so they're two off the top. Okay. Um, so they're just looking to branch out in terms of player recruitment, and you know they're excited about what we're, what we have planned for our club. So um, we've got that link established with the the view of trying to get players um, over to St. Martin and and, and same professionally. Okay, maybe to be a lot friendly here or there possibly yeah. as well. Yeah, it's going to be sort of a big club thing. So it'll be a lot of sort of us bringing players over to them and. and them is bringing coaches over and we'll be sending coaches over um, for coach head weekends and stuff like that. So it's going to be a lot of uh, movement sort of forward and back between both clubs. Oh, really, really positive anyway. Just yeah. including tonight, obviously, I mean, a lot of publicity over the last few weeks about the, the link up of the, the line of junior TV. Yeah. I mean, it was all over the papers. It was all over the television. Yeah. It was everywhere. You were a bit of a celebrity at that, but give us a bit of the background. How did that come about? Um, we were looking sponsors just for the kids teams and I put it into our women's group chat um, and just sort of say girls if anyone's know anyone who'd be willing to sponsor a kid um, let me know a couple of hours later one of our players Nita Rafferty sent me a screenshot of a, a Twitter chat and it was from Martin Comston I thought it was photoshopped or something I thought it was weighing me up but it was, it was legit it was legit so um, he ended up getting in contact with me and we just sort of sort of took it from her and he just sort of asked him what we needed and 
and he was more than happy to help. You must have thought it was a little bit of a wind up somewhere along the way, did you? Know? I did. <laughs> when I got the, the screenshot sent to me, I thought it was. I thought it was Photoshop. I thought she was winding me up and going to put a screenshot on the chat or something. I thought she was she was having me on, like, but no, it was it was a jit. I don't wish to sort of alarm you too much, but anybody who's been watching alarm, uh, Line of Duty this series, everybody loved it up to the last episode. And then all of a sudden, the last episode, people were saying, oh, such a disappointing ending. Yeah, so I'm, hoping I'm hoping your season's not going to go that way now. Ah, it's only I am it. Hopefully not. Hopefully not, anyway. Okay, listen, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show today. Obviously, we wish you and Belfast Sally all the best for this season. We look forward to seeing you when the, the competitive games start up in a few weeks' time. So thanks very much for taking the time to speak to us this evening. Thanks very much, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Rebecca, we'll look a wee bit now at your, sort of your, your local career here. You started off, I think, with Bangor Ladies quite a number of years ago um, as, a, as a youngster, basically, and that's where you really cut your teeth in terms of football. Was that right? Yeah. Um, well, I think I started there by 14, um, and I was there for about two, three years, and then broke up in the senior setup, and I was still quite young, and I started within the seniors when I was about 16, um, playing for them, and yeah, it was, it was a good starting point for me, I think. And you went from there and got to Glentorn for a while. Think, yeah, was there for one season. Yeah, there? I was there for one season, uh, and I think uh, a lot of credit due to Glentorn because that's when um, I really kicked on. And when I got back into the county setups and stuff, um, through Gail, she got me back there. Yeah, so it was a good season. From Glentorn, then you went across to Linfield, and that's obviously been the highlight of your local career so far. You've won obviously leagues and so forth. Up, I think you've also played in the Champions League with Linfield. Is that right? Yeah, well, once I moved to Linfield, um, I was still quite young and I was playing for the under-19s and right. I think that was probably a good move for me at the time and helped, my, helped me confidence-wise and um, once the 19 season finished, then I was starting to break into the senior squad and right. my first season in the senior squad went well for me and I really pushed on from there. The Champions League game, I think you were away to Anderlecht, which is obviously another experience which you've Obviously, had it wasn't a, a great result. Let's put it that way. I think he's lost eight nil or so that. But once again, a professional side against the part-time setup, so it was going to be a tough one. Yeah, well, I think for us as a club going to the Champions League, it's always going to be tough. But um, I think it's more for the experience, and if we can get a result, then even better. But I think for us as a squad going there was quite hard. We lost quite a lot of players, but as a team, we came together and uh, we dug deep and got through the game. Premiership this year, I suspect, will be probably the hardest one. I mean, there's obviously been news now in the last few weeks that it's going to be extended to eight teams from next season, which is going to help because I think, I think we all agree six teams is too small from that sort of viewpoint. But this season, there's only six teams, but it's going to be a tough season. I mean, Linfield, from your viewpoint, I mean, disappointing result there. That I know you scored and so forth, but disappointing results, so maybe not the start they wanted, really. No, well, I think um, first game went well for us and then going into Cliftonville, uh, we just didn't start well and didn't get the result we wanted. But it's been a tough few seasons for us. We've lost quite a few players and uh, a lot of the young ones have started to break through. So there's mm -hmm. a lot of new faces. And I think as a team, we gel well. But um, yeah, we're just, it's going to be a tough season. But we'll get through it as a team. And hopefully at the end of it, we'll have a few trophies yeah, in the well, calendar. I mean, the other sides have sort of signed a lot of players. And yeah. The haven't really been that active. But I mean... You can never rule really Linfield out in terms of a team. I mean, the, there's always sort of the, the team spirit's always been first class at Linfield over the years. And obviously, you know, as, as sort of champions from a couple of years ago, they'll want to regain that trophy if at all possible. Yeah, I think it's just have to take it game by game. And um, hopefully, as a squad, we can pull through. You know, the league's a lot more competitive this year. A lot of clubs have signed new players, and we haven't been able to get the recruitment that we've wanted, maybe. But um, hopefully, as a squad, we can pull together and get the results. Is it at Glentorn next time around? Is that right? Yeah, Glentorn. Big, big two derby, and so and that's. The, I know it's early days. We're only going down to the third game, but there's a lot of pressure in that game even already for Linfield. Yeah, well, I think for us, um, we need to get a result after the Cliftonville game to, you know, keep our ho hopes alive. I know it's early on, but um, for us, I think getting a result against Clifton, no, uh, sorry, Glentorn, um, would really help us push on. Yeah, interesting. See how it turns out. Right? Okay, so that brings us really to the end of this week's show. It's uh, thanks once again to Rebecca for being our studio guest. And of course, we wish her every success for not only the season locally, but also in terms of a Northern Ireland player as well. Hopefully we'll see you really developing your career over the next, next period of time. Thank you for having me. 
And finally, we just want to say a big thank you to all of our viewers today. Thanks once again for taking the time to watch today's show. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Hopefully we'll see you all again next time around. But until then, it's bye for now.